Good morning students. Today we will continue learning about the fundamental rights given to the citizens of India. We have already learned about right to equality, right to freedom and right against exploitation. Today we will learn about three more rights enjoyed by the Indians. First is right to freedom of religion that means dharmic swatantrata ka adhikar. India is a secular country where every citizen has right to follow any religion. So children, India is a secular country. Secular means India is a nation with no state religion. Therefore, every citizen of India can follow the religion that he believes in. So children, according to this right, Every citizen of India has the right to follow any religion that he likes. Nobody can force us to follow a particular religion or nobody can stop us from following our own religion. Next is cultural and educational rights that means Sanskriti or Siksha ka adhikar. Every person has the right to get education and also get admission into any educational institution. All groups who are less in numbers can develop and preserve their cultures. Every child between the age of 6 to 14 has the right to get free compulsory education. So children according to this right every citizen of India has right to get education and study in any educational institution that he likes. Means a person can study in any school, college or university that he wants to. Also children, those groups of people whose number is less in our country or they are minorities, they can develop and preserve their own culture. And lastly, Every child whose age is between 6 to 14 years has the right to get free and compulsory education. Now, right to constitutional remedies, it means samvidhanik upcharon ka adhikar. Every citizen is protected by the law and is treated equally. In case if any of the fundamental rights are denied or taken away, a citizen has the right to approach the highest court in the country that is the Supreme Court. So children according to this right, every citizen of our country is protected by the law and is equally treated by the law. And in case if these rights are denied or the rights are taken away from us, then we have the right to approach the highest court of our country that is the supreme court. That means if any of the above five rights is not given to us then in that case we can go to supreme court. Now children let us read this good to know. India is also called a parliamentary democracy. The Indian parliament has two houses the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, the parliament makes laws for the entire country. So who makes laws for the entire country? Parliament makes laws for the entire country. Now as citizens of India, we enjoy certain fundamental rights. But along with these, we also have certain duties towards our country. These are called fundamental duties. So children, as citizen of India, we enjoy six rights, but with rights comes duties. So we all have certain duties towards our country and these duties are known as fundamental duties which every citizen of India should follow. So these duties are respect the national flag, national anthem and national symbols, respect the constitution of India value the heritage and protect the culture of India, protect the natural environment and public property, be proud of our country, help in the defense of our country and protect our country in times of danger 
and lastly promote brotherhood and treat all citizens equally so these are some of the duties which as the citizen of india we should follow next children is directive principles of state policy the constitution of india lays down certain instructions for the government the government is expected to keep these in mind while making laws these instructions ensure that the government works for the welfare of the people so children what is directive principles of state policy see the constitution of india has made certain instruction or policies for the state government to follow the state government is expected to keep these instructions in mind while it is making laws for the people of our country and these directive principles of state policy works for the welfare of the people of our country so directive principles of state policy are certain policies which the state government have to keep in mind while they are making laws for the country so these guidelines are to provide work for everyone equal pay for equal work for both men and women proper working conditions in the area of work ensuring that every child gets free education ensuring that health is sorry wealth is not concentrated in the hands of of only a few rich people and the poor should not be exploited providing a decent standard living for everyone so these are certain policies or guidelines which the government should keep in mind while they are making laws now children with this we have finished with the syllabus for annual exam now let us do this pick stop what do you see in the picture where is it located so children this is the supreme court of india and it is located in new delhi now let us do this time to think name a few important buildings on which we see the national flag when is the flag lowered at half mast so children the important buildings on which we see the national flag are rashtrapati bhavan parliament house supreme court and high court now when is the flag lowered at half mast so the flag is lowered at half mast when either the president prime minister or the vice president dies when he or she is at service so when the prime minister or president or vice president is is in service and if that person dies then the flag is lowered at half mast so children with this we have finished with the last chapter now i will be sending the pdf of question answers along with the exercises please write it down in in your write it down in your copies and learn it with this children we have finished with the syllabus now i will see you in the next class with some revision work thank you children